Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and this is the Blipbox from Playtime Engineering, a toy synth which I bought for my two-year-old, and um, a, 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 a little bit, a little bit for me as well, I guess. But I know my viewership, and you're an observant bunch, and it won't have escaped your attention that sat next to the Blipbox is the Electron Digitact, which is a grown-up proper instrument. So why are these two things sat next to each other? Uh, well, it's because today we are going to take a serious and scholarly look at the synthesis engine behind the blip, bo blip blocks and uh, uh, discuss how you can use it as a serious instrument potentially in your setup if you happen to have a young child that you want to buy a synth for but also um, <laughs> want to play with it yourself. So let's start with the toy aspect of it. Um, it has a built-in uh, speaker, which is pretty good as far as a uh, built-in speaker on a toy synth goes, but it also has a line out. It has a, a USB 5 volt um, adapter uh, power in, so you can power it. will also run on batteries, of course. And it has a MIDI in, um, which means that we are able to clock it and control it um, using another synth uh, or another instrument. In this case, it's going to be the dig attack. But let's um, approach this just for a second from the, the toy perspective and turn it on. And the nice thing about the blip blocks is that you turn it on and it immediately starts making noise. And you can immediately start turning knobs and, and stuff happens. Also has a drum section, just a kick drum and a snare drum section. You can press buttons to randomize the settings. And just jam out with it. And it's you know, it's good fun. Uh, this big lever here controls the tempo. Let's say we don't want it to play its own internal um, sequences and we want to use it as a serious instrument. There are probably two things that you want to do in order to get the blip blocks into a uh, state where it is ready to be used seriously. Uh, the first of those things is to press these two buttons together and that will turn off the internal sequencer. Um, that's now going to allow us to play it uh, using MIDI. So uh, this uh, MIDI track on the dig attack is set up to be sending data to MIDI channel one, which is hard coded and that gives you control over the synth sound. Um, I've also got on track um, 10 and 11, if I just turn off chromatic, control over the two drum sounds. Um, so that's on MIDI channel two, hard coded, um, odd numbered MIDI notes for the kick drum an even number for the snare, I think. We won't be doing too much um, with those two, though I don't think we'll be sticking instead with the synth engine. Uh, the other thing that you're probably going to want to do in order to make the uh, synth more usable for serious things uh, is to turn on the parameter display mode, which will give you some feedback in these lights as to what's actually going on in the synth and to get to that, you press this button, which triggers the kick drum normally, and tap that one. And now uh, we actually have some visual feedback, and we'll talk about what that feedback actually represents as we go along, um, as to what the current settings on the instrument actually are. But probably the most important control on the entire blip box is this. And that is that our filter uh, well, it's the filter modulation depth, actually it depends how things are set up, it is on a big red lever and frankly any synth that now doesn't provide me filter cutoff on a big red lever uh, gets 0 out of 10 going forwards because it's very satisfying to have a lever for, um, for filter control. I think we have to get a joystick control um, for my uh, Euro rack as well. Um, yes, I like the fact that we have a lever for filter control. Good stuff. The other control which is universal 
um, on the synth, no matter how you have things set, is this green knob here. And this is the release for our amp envelope. So I turn it down and we have instant off halfway. We have more of a sort of a plucky sound, I guess, and all the way up. We have a pretty long, pretty long release, depending on what's going on with the rest of the synth. But it's somewhere around there for the moment. So the Blitbox actually has um, eight synthesis engines, if you like, uh, and when you select one of these eight engines, uh, it's going to alter what uh, waveform the oscillator is, is is playing or what waveforms the oscillator is playing, uh, but also it will change um, what is able to be modulatable uh, within that um, synth engine, so whether that's sort of uh, sync sounds or phase modulation or frequency modulation, um, there are various different modes that are available to us. And we select that mode uh, by pressing this big blue button in the middle here. So we can hear some interesting sounds going on in there. Um, the way that you know which of these is selected, we just keep an eye on this light that's currently red here. And as I press it, you can see that stuff is moving around. It's gone um, yellow there because there was already a green light there. Red, 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 and red. So these uh, will indicate which of uh, the oscillator engines are currently selected. That one sounds good. So let's let's stick with that one for the moment because it sounds pretty cool. So um, you can hear that obviously stuff has been modulated there. Um, how do we know what's been modulated and by how much? Well, these two blue knobs here will control the depth of two different parameters within the oscillator, which can be modulated. And these are sort of, I think they're bipolar depending on which um, mode you're in. Uh, but how do you know uh, what is being sent to each of these uh, sources? Well, <laughs> this uh, synth actually has a modulation matrix, believe it or not. Um, so we can choose which of um, the modulation sources are going to each of the two modulation destinations. Well, three actually, because we also have the filter. Um, and we select the uh, modulation source going to each destination by using these buttons here. So this one, this one, and this one here. So these two are for our oscillator, and this one is for our filter. Uh, and we can tell where things are going based upon which thing is lit here, here, and here. So here is a useful thing if you're trying to sort of zero your patch to understand what the particular uh, engines are actually doing. If we can get to a situation where none of these lights are lit, that means that the... Um, things which are modulatable are now just going to respond directly to these two knobs and to the filter lever. So now any movement we're hearing is due to like detune and the like. This lever is now going to directly be controlled or be directly uh, controlling the filter. And these two blue knobs That's a detune between two oscillators. And this is like an, an interval select for. That oscillator. Filthy. So let's check out the um, different um oscillator modes and learn what they're about so we're currently in this oscillator mode here and we were hearing that we have like a interval select here and then a detune between two oscillators in this mode so next mode, so we're over here now.
so just two straight up oscillators that we have pitch control over. seems to be related to which note has been played somehow. Interesting. Uh, next mode. Something else to do with multiple Mod thing happening there. Next mode. Like a phase modulation super saw kind of thing going on there. really cool. It's kind of fading between two different wave shapes I guess. And then we're super soaring it. Nice. Next mode. That sounds like sync. Some kind of sync mode happening here. Nice. Uh, next mode. sounds like ring mod between filthy yeah probably get a good respace out of this mod.
that sounds like FM and that's your ratio control. Yeah, that's like a ratio control on FM, isn't it? where we started cool yeah so um eight uh, quite filthy uh, <laughs> oscillator modes there and what is interesting is that there's a way of getting to eight more modes um by doing a, a button combination when you turn it on I think it's those two when you turn it on or those two those two i think when you turn it on and turning this knob and you can switch to a different uh oscillator mode as well um uh, so you get eight more on top of that. So what if you want to apply some modulation using one of the modulation sources? Well, uh, as I mentioned, um, these three buttons here are going to allow us to do that. So for example, if we want to apply some filter modulation, we press this button and a green light appears here. That tells us that it's sent to the envelope. So here we've got that fade in happening there. If we turn this down. So I think when it's set to the envelope, the decay is fixed and this affects the attack. Uh, if we want it set to an LFO, we press it again. See it's set to this first LFO here, we can control the, the speed here. There are your wubs. Uh, press it again, it'll be this one instead. So this has got a uh, downward saw. And the modulation amount is controlled by the lever. Press it again, the green lights go out, and we're just back to manual control using the lever. Uh, and then to same same deal going on with the um, two modulation destinations. So let's just remind ourselves what this is. So that's a, a detune on that one. So if we want that to be controlled by our uh, envelope, turn up the depth. So much there. Uh, LFO. Or the other one. Deal with this control. So this one's our um, offset, which should be pretty interesting. So
we can use them in combination. So now I've got the uh, filter going to the envelope, the offset going to uh, the first LFO, and then my detune going to the uh, second LFO. So we can do controlled serious synthesis. Depending on which um, mode you're using, you may want to choose in diff be choosing different locations. So now we've got that higher pitched sound controlled by this LFO, giving us some nice vibrato. So here, for example, now I've got uh, this LFO going to both the upper uh, sound there and to the filter. So they're moving in the same direction at the same time. So we can have that lower friend fade in with the envelope. And maybe we want to have the filter do the same thing. Yes, uh, so that's our, that's our sync sound there. So uh, let's uh, turn off all the control there. Obviously, we want this control to push our sync. Coming from our... Uh, Maybe we want this control on the first LFO going slowly. filter with our pingy LFO there. So there's lots of fun that we can have. Uh, the other button I should probably point out is this one here, which just randomizes everything. That might be a great way to find usable sounds as well. Or not so usable, perhaps. Uh, the other red button here, incidentally, it's kind of like a circuit bender button. And 
depending on what everything's set to. Or you could do quite mundane things. Or quite mad things. Finally, I guess we should uh, take a look at how um, you can use it in the context of other instruments going on. So, um, this patch, not so much. Let's, uh, let's try and make this a little bit more uh, reasonable. Let's turn off our modulation for a second. Um, it's a pretty cool sounding for just a toy. Well, I hope that was interesting uh, to see uh, a toy in a, maybe a, a more serious context. Um, there's also an After Dark version, which I think basically does the same sort of thing, but I think it defaults to having the weirder um, oscillator modes by default, perhaps. Um, if you're interested in hearing those weirder oscillator modes, um, similar approach in terms of what each of them does then let me know in the comments i'm happy to to, to go through them why not um uh, but yeah it's um it's a fun little toy um and if you happen to have young children and you want an excuse to get <laughs> your children but also maybe yourself and you synth to tinker with then um i think you can do worse um it's a pretty interesting sounding synth um not a lot else that I own that sounds much like it. I guess the nearest thing uh, for me is probably that Megatron because uh, it kind of has that 8-bit vibe going on as well. But it's you know, quite quite a different beast. Um, 
the UX is probably a little bit suboptimal if you're trying to do serious work in, but, but once you realize that you have the parameter display and that you you understand the way the mod matrix works, it's pretty quick to get to sounds that um, are meaningful. The big downside, I guess, for me, um, sadly, is that it doesn't respond to MIDI CC messages, which is a shame because it would be nice to be able to uh, modulate this sort of stuff, especially the filter, I guess, um, using something like the dig attack uh, but given that it is a child's toy essentially and it's uh, and for the cost of it um what you can get it for now uh, has come down in price a fair bit i think um i guess it's maybe expecting a bit much to have a full midi implementation perhaps but anyway as always thank you for joining me um uh, i hope you enjoyed that um until next time take care bye bye